Shalom Aleichem, Rabbi Yisai, we're back on Torah Anytime. This week we have a double header, Sazriya Mitzoro, and next week also a double header, because um, that's Achimos Kedoshim. Why? Because on Pesach we had two Shabbosos, which were Yontem, the first Shabbos and the second Shabbos. So on those Shabbosos we did not read... Um, the Shabbos Sedra, because it was Yom Tov, so we have to make it up now. So Azriya and Mitzorah together. And next week, Achrei Mos Kedoshim together. Now, this week is going to be the Israeli Independence Day, called Hey Iyar. That is an interesting day. Uh, we know all the problems with it, but it was a day that Hashem gave the Goyim at the, at the UN a decision to let the Jews have a, this piece of land called Eretz Yisrael. Now, we're not talking about the positive and the negatives of them. I'm just telling you the fact. It exists, it exists for 64 years. If it wouldn't, it's supposed to exist, it wouldn't. Hashem let it exist. Now, is there hinted to it anywhere in the Torah on that date that maybe a... Um, Jewish secular state should come into existence. Is there any hint? Maybe, maybe somewhere in the Torah, maybe. Well, it's a very interesting thing. I want you to look at Nitzavim and Devarim in Nitzavim. Let's look at the Pasik. Pasik Lamit, Pasha Lamit, Pasik Hey, Vahaviacho, I will bring you. Hashem Alekecho. El Ha'aretz to the land, Asher Yarsha Vasecha, that your forefathers inherited, the Yerishto, you will inherit it, the Heitivacha, it'll be good for you, the Hirbacha, it'll be, and it will increase, the Abasecha, you will increase greater than your um, forefathers. So you say, yes, yeah, so, so what? So we pick out a pussy. Abaisai, what year was that 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 happened? It was Tavshin Ches. That was um, 5708. This Pesach I just read you is number 5708. So in the Torah, there's not 6,000 Pesukim. There's um, 5846. So in 1948, after creation 1948, Abraham Avinu was born too. But in the secular year, 1948, in the Torah, in the lunar calendar, Avram was born. But in the secular Gentile calendar, 1948, when that state was founded, it was Tavshin Ches. And Tavshin Ches is 5708. And Pasuk 5708 is, Vaviacho, Hashem Alekecho, El Ha'aretz, Asher Yarsha Vasecho, Yerishto, you will inherit it. That Tivacha will be good for you. Here, Bacha, and you'll, and you'll increase me out of more than your forefathers. Now, the Pussing before it talks about Mashiach. Look, in Yi and the Dachikov, Mixer if you're rejected ones who don't want any part of Torah, if they're re, the rejects or people that dropped out on their own, Mixer Shemaim, at the end of heaven, Mishomi Kabetzcha, they will collect you, says Tagam Yonason, Kabetzcha by Eliohu Anovi. Hashem Alekech Mishom Yikachet Cho, it says by Mashiach. Tagam and Yonis. And then comes Pazik 5708, and that's 1948. Vavia Hashem Alekech I'm not a Navi, I don't know nothing. All I say is an interesting coincidence. If any plane crashes, it's not an accident. God wants it to crash. Anything happens in history, Hashem wants it so. Uh, I know it was founded by people that don't believe in Torah and Mitzvahs. And the founder of the idea in 1898, he was, he he's not against Torah, he was an ignoramus, he knew nothing about Torah. A very big man, Ben Odom Chavero. But Ben Odom Mokum, I don't know if he's a kofir, but maybe Bobby Curtis, I don't know, but he didn't know anything about Torah. But he was a noble human being, and all the presidents and all the Kaisers listened to him. Mm -hmm. Look at the history. So that's the first thing I want to tell you what's going to happen this week on the Hay E or Chas Sholem. You can't say Tillam, uh, Hal Dale, because we can't make up new dinner. 
bracha. Forget about a bracha. You can't even say halal. All day long you can say uh, hit the tillum, but halal, where you cannot create new halachas, this is not hefker, this is Torah. Therefore, it's a secular state that allows us, me and you, to go there to the coast of Marabi, Marazam Achbeila, Keva Rochel, and a hundred other places that you wouldn't be able to go to. So Hashem wants it. Thousands of people learning Torah over there. The biggest issue on earth is there. So we have to understand from both sides. It's not black and white like one, like some make it. It's an interesting thing. It's like a cell phone. A bracha and a klola. You see this thing? It's a klola and a bracha. That's a bracha and a klola, like everything in life. We have to know how to work this. We don't know anything about it. We wait until Mashiach comes and we'll see what's going to be. For one thing, for sure, it won't be a democracy. Because that's not the way the Torah works. And we'll have no free speech, no free press. You can't do your own thing, no liberties. Everything must be according to Torah law. And all the Goyim will love this. We'll finally have the world turned back to sanity. It's a different kind of world order. You want to see how the world's going to be? You say it every single day of your life, three times a day. Second parsha in Oleinu. Take a look at that. Everybody will call, believe in Hashem only. All religions will disappear, vaporize. Not destroy, just disappear. No one will believe in it. Even the biggest will shame, turn to Hashem. That's the first subject I wanted to talk about. Now let's talk about the next subject, Yud Gimel Mem Zayin. The Ramban says, this never happened, Sazri Yemetzorah. All these dinim and all these halachas, never, it's against nature, it never happened. Look at the Ramban. You wouldn't believe it. Sazriya, Yud Gimel, Mem Zayin. We're talking about uh, uh, Tzaras on the Beged. It says Tzaras on the Beged. Ba Beged, ki yia bo, in Sazriya. Ha Beged, ki yia bo, neged Tzaras ba Beged. Ba ha Beged. Not together, because you can't each wear shatans, can only be wool and linen. So this is the Ramban. It never happened. Zeho Inyan, Ramban. Zeho Inyan, Eina Beteba Klau. It's not natural. It can't happen. So why are you talking about things that can't happen? Velo, Havei Ba'olam. Never was in the world. Vechein Nigoi Habotim. And so the houses to get Saras on the cement, vertical and horizontal, never happened. Never happened. Now we have a rule that nega on the body is the third step. First it goes on the house. That's the way it has to be. And then a person who doesn't do tshuva, comes closer, the second covering his clothes, the whip and the woof, the horizontal and the vertical uh, things, one turns red, one turns green. Bright red, bright green. And the cement between the bricks in your house, has to turn red and green. So if you first it comes on the house, then it comes on the begotten, and then it comes on your body. Third step. Well, if the first step never happened, you can't have the second step or the third step. So it never happened. You can't think of one human being that ever got saras in history of the world. Never. Never. Not once. Moshe Abenu. <laughs> one minute. He put his hand in here, and he took it out, saras, put it in again, got cured. You, first of all, you need a Kohen. Moshe was no Kohen. There were no Kohanim yet. He wasn't even a Bukhar. And number two, where you have any of the procedures, uh, Moshe went in, went out, one second. So you can't learn from that. That's an exceptional case. Iron and Miriam, mil- mil- one minute, then it went away. A Kohen came Paskin for himself. And he did all, the, the, all these things. Did you check the hair? It doesn't say the hair and the skin. The, the, the herring fall out. The, the hair is here. It doesn't say nothing. And there's no details over there by Iron and Miriam. One minute, they got the and went away. Six months, six difficult at Saras. Uziyah Melch Yehuda on his forehead. It was not the regular way it housed all the dinim over here. Now you say, um, it can only, so the Torah says only on Eden, only on Jews. Paro, says the Gemara, in the Chumash. Hashem was, the Gemara Rashi said, he wanted to have, do the wrong thing with Sora, so he got Saras. That's not Saraz, because he can only come to one a year. That's called leprosy. My father explains it in Maya. One, Nige Haguf is called leprosy, 
I'm curable. I have nothing to do with Lush and Hara. It has nothing to do with a coin. And you can't have nothing to do with Lush and Hara. So that's what Pharaoh we got. And Hashem said uh, to Pharaoh, if the Tzaddik prayed for you, you'll be cured, otherwise you die. So Avram prayed for him, and he, and he got cured. Naaman, the Goethe general, uh, that's not Tzaddik, it's leprosy. Why did he get it? Just to show that there is a Navi in Yisrael, because Elisha, they didn't recognize him, and the wicked king was a wicked man. So to show there's someone greater than the king of Israel, they they gave the Elisha to come to Elisha. So Naaman came to Elisha. He said, "You buddy, you have the, the leprosy. Jump in the river there." And the, the yard He says, "You tell me to jump in the river. <laughs> I got better rivers than in Syria." He says, "Okay, have a good day." A few months later, he came back. It was getting worse. So he had captured a Jewish girl, uh, Naaman, and she says, "Why don't you listen to the navi? Maybe it'll work." So he went into the yard and cured one second. Like a baby skin. He was so surprised. He, the whole world heard about the Navi Alisha, who cured a guy from leprosy. And that's not how the Torah says you get cured. Nothing to do with going in a river. Where does it say anywhere in these two boxes? You go into a river. Where, 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 where? So it's just to prove, to show that there was a Navi in Israel. So um, he got cured. He says, can I do something for you? Give you money and gold and silver and food? He said, no, no, have a nice day. It's like his So, uh, a Gechazi, his Talmud, with his three sons, ran after Naaman when he heard the Rebbe said, we don't need no money, and uh, we don't need any money, and any silk, any garments, any food. Ran after him, he said, my Rebbe changed his mind. So when he came back to, um, to the Navi, Alicia said, no, where were you the last couple of days? No, we was just around here. He said, no, you weren't. I, I know, I'm a Navi. You went to Naaman, you lied. You said that I changed my mind. Therefore, since you lied, you get Saras. You get leprosy of Tzaraz. You get his Tzaraz, the Goyesh of Tzaraz. That's incurable. So gay because even the three sons died. And so did, well, I don't know about Naaman. He got cured. So there's um, six people that got leprosy and five people that got Tzaraz. Moshe, because he said at the Sned, Heim lo yamino li, they won't believe me. When I come to them, I'm, I'm a nobody, an 80-year-old nobody. Who am I? They've never heard of me. Yom Hashem said, you are saying English and heart against my people. They're going to believe you. Trust me, they'll believe you. I know my children, even though on the 49th level of Tumor, the Bnei Avram Yisri Yaakov, they have an ability to believe an honest man. You spoke Lush and Hora, Saras on your hand. Behind your hand, behind under the mouth. Because you deserve Marcus with the hand, but uh, that's why you got it on your hand. He spoke bad against my people, and of course that's Moshe, and then came Miriam and Aaron, and then came Dovin, it was Yehovah, five people got Tzaraz, biggest Sadiqim in the world. And you have to live in Eretz Yisrael. You can't come otherwise. The house has to be in Eretz Yisrael, it has to be on the house first, then on the Gugodim, then on the body. The house has to be made out of three things, and to be made out of wood and stone and cement, not all wood, not all stone, not all cement, not all wood, it has to have three things. It must be square, it can't be triangle, it can't be round, it can't be a pentagon, as the Rashi said, it has to be square, it has to have four walls, it has to be in Eretz Yisrael. <laughs> you know, never happened. And uh, so my motion was not in Eretz Yisrael, it was in Arsina, that's why I wasn't Saraz, it looked like Saraz. And, um, um, so five people got Saras and six people got leprosy. Gehazim is three sons, that's four, and Faro and Nama. So that takes care of that. So why do we learn it? Why do we learn these two sedras? So many Pasukim. Wow, and then it's Mitsora, you bring this animal. If you're not rich enough, you bring that animal, and then you do this, you put this, they, they, they pile it all up on the train, the coin puts his hand underneath, and you wave it this right and left, back and forth, up and down, all kind of procedures. It never happened, Rabban said. The three things in the world that never happened, and never could happen. One is a Ben Sora Mora, a boy of 90 days after Bar Mitzvah, within three months, he steals from his mother. A father, meat, a money, and he buys meat and wine, and he gets sick. He's addicted. He's addicted. Instead of being interested in sports or maybe in even women, he's interested in food. He's a glutton and a, and a drunk. So they first give him malchus, and then they warn him, and then malchus, and then they have to execute him because they know that he'll one day have such an addiction, he'll kill for the money to buy the food. So it never happened. 
Why do you learn it? The Rosh becomes Chad. Learn it and get Chad for learning Torah. Here, Hanidachas, a city that goes against Hashem, the whole city, 51%. The whole city goes against Hashem, does a vote You have to burn the whole city down. You know why it never happened? Because if one house, even one house, has a mezuzah on the door, even a mezuzah, the whole town is safe. So you see, it's impossible. And by Sora and Mora, the mother and father have to have the same voice. And by Saras, you have to live in a square house made from three different materials. Has to be an area to swell. Only is one of the biggest sadiq in the world, never on regular people. So why do you learn these three things? Learn it, get schar for learning Torah. It purifies your mind, your neshama. One tells you by Sora how to be mechanic children. Usually it's the parents' fault if a young boy goes off to the dirt. Yeah, because the boy sees contradictions in his family. He sees they talk, they don't, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. The father doesn't have kovei eat him. The Torah, the father doesn't wear the yamas all the time. Doesn't wear sitzes all the time. He he talks like and her, and uh, he sees uh, that uh, they don't believe what they what they preach. You never hear about a kaddish baruch in the house. You hear them gan eden and there's schar of onish of a kiva eger sharashi and tosfos. And then and, and, and the Ritva and the Khajibal, you don't hear Torah there. The kids turned off. Wouldn't you be turned off if you had a secular lifestyle only with the the, the, the kiddush and the parties and the chasdas and the and the but never none of the real values. The kids turned off. It's probably the parents' fault. Maybe, maybe I'm not saying. And Ben and and and, and as a Ben Sorimura. And why does a person talk Lush and Hari? Probably he always hears it around his family. Yeah, maybe not. However, these are the three things that Jewish Chabbos Just learn it and purify your brain. One, you talk, he just tells you about how to be mechanic children. One tells you how not to talk Lashon Hara, how to treat people with respect. The other thing is don't live in a community that don't believe in Hashem. You Jewish Chabbos So you say, well, what's the point of learning Torah? It has no practical application. 30% of the Torah has no practical application. I'm a farmer. I'm a coin. What have to learn this for? Talmud Torah, pure Talmud Torah is not halachic Talmud Torah. Halachic Talmud Torah is how to build the sukkah, how to check the lulav, is this meat kosher, is the wife a nida, is how to be mechal shabbat, how do you not mechal shabbat, how do you, all these things in Torah is called halacha, pure Torah that has no practical application, that's Torah the Shema. Doesn't have to have an application. So you say, well, well, well isn't that a guide for life? Yeah. Your life, your neshama is part of your life. How to tie yourself and connect with the Bodo Olam. You know, in the secular world, you can get a PhD in theoretical physics. Theoretical? <laughs> what do you need if it's not applicable? There's a, there's a field called theoretical physics. And in higher math, you ever, anyone listening knows something about math? You know that 7 times 7 is 49. That's the square, and 7 is the square root. So it means if it's minus 7 times minus 7 is plus 49. Plus 7 times plus 7 is, is, uh, is 49. What about plus 7 times minus 7 is minus 49? Can you take a root from a negative square? Impossible. Higher math you can. Imaginary numbers. Imaginary. So you see there is higher forms of knowledge that maybe is not so practical, but it has other applications, logic applications. All right, that takes care of that. So the Ramban says, never happened. Couldn't happen. And uh, learn Torah. the pure Torah. It's the mitzvah to learn Torah. And all this, and Sazriya Mitzoro, so many pesukim, two things about a something that never could be. This is why most people are bored with Negoyim. And the building of the Mishkan with the colors, of the, with the mounts, you know, the... The, the numbers, yeah, it's very practical, but people don't like details. It's too hard to think. It's hard to concentrate. The building of the Michigan board people. Carbonus is so many types of carbonus, 72 different types of carbonus in five categories. That's too detailed. The building, building of the Michigan, the dimensions and the color, and the carbonus with this kind and that kind and this kind, male and female and this and that. And then with the, with the, the, the Saraz, these three things, Chas Mishon, a point to a lot of people, they like stories. Well, not everybody can do past ninth grade math either. And they can't do calculus. And they can't do logarithms. So they don't, can't do it. It's too hard. Some people can't learn the Dafiyomi we're learning now. It's very, very difficult. The Elam and Croesus. Uh, 
it's not your fault. That's the way some people are. They're just some people are very practical people. Some can't learn this theoretical stuff. So that's the second thing we discussed today. Hey, Eor and the Ramban. Now let's load the Lagba Omer. Where is Lagba Omer mentioned in the Torah? You know, we're getting to Lagba Omer. By the way, Omer, I ask it, uh, I have a new program now on in Brooklyn every Wednesday at four. It's called Hidabrut. So I asked I want to I asked a lot of questions, but they're all for one hour I had I don't know, 150 people calling, only 17 got in online. One question I asked them. How could Omer be 49? You count 49 days. But where in the word I am is 49? I got 17 callers. A lot of them came very close. But how does Omer equal 49? Well, one lady won. Uh, there were two questions. That one lady won. I am is 49. You say, well, Gematria, Reish is 200. The last, who said Gematria? There's another way to work the Aleph Bay called Hamispar Baalav Bay. The number in the placement of the Aleph Bay from the beginning to the end. The placement of the numbers. I happen to be is the 16th letter. Mem is the 13th. Well, 13 to 16 is 29. And Reish is number 20. 20, 29 is 49. Bingo, there it is. One, one, lady one, uh, Mrs. K, and she got a garnet necklace. Nice piece of jewelry. Then I asked another question. That, that was uh, 99% asked the other question. How come it says by the Omer, most of them asked this, and tried to answer this question. Asked two questions. That one uh, they got, one person. Um, how come it says Yom Yom Echad Ba Omer? Yom Yom Echad Ba Omer? And not Yom Yom Rishon? Hmm? Echad is one and Rishon is first. Yeah, so. So they gave all kinds of answers. They were very close, many of them, but they couldn't explain it. It took me years too. He was saying Yiddish, of his felt, of his felt in Hasbara, felt is in Havana. If you can't explain it, you don't understand it. So you say, well, one, and the first, aren't they the same? No way. Says Hayom Yom Echad La Omer or Bo Omer. That's not important. Hayom Yom Echad. But every Sunday morning, when you die at the end after a lane, you say Hayom Yom Rishon Rishonus. What's the difference? Now I give you the difference. When you're talking about something that happened in the past, you say Rishon. First day since Shabbos, the highlight of the week. The first day out of prison. The first day, I'm looking for a job. Uh, but number one is the future. There was no Shabbos yet in the world. Hashem is working towards the highlight of the week, Shabbos. One is towards. Rishon, first from. I have one week, one month left to my job, uh, to graduation. I have 39 days left for graduation. I'm looking forward. But first day, if the highlight was behind you, Shabbos, you say, Yom Yom Rishon and Shabbos. Shabbos was the highlight. But when Hashem created the world, there was uh, no Shabbos yet. So it says, Yom Echad. We're working towards the Shabbos. So we say, Yom Echad Omer. The purpose of getting out of Mitzrayim is not physical freedom. The purpose of getting out of Mitzrayim is to have a new agenda called Torah. One day towards the great goal. Two days, I've got to prepare myself. Three days, four days. A yom Yom Echa. Today's the first day towards that great goal. A Yom Yom Rishon B'Shabbos. Today's the first day since I came out of Shabbos. So Rishon first means from, and Echad is to. All right, anyhow, that was the question. Now, about the Omer. Where is it in the Pasha here? Right in the Pasha. And in the Pasha is about the Spheres Omer. Even though it doesn't talk about the Omer, it doesn't talk about Lachma Omer, it doesn't talk about Shavuos, but Shavuos is in there. And the, and, the, and the two Torahs we got in Sinai, and the two Chalas you bring on Shavuos, it's all in here. Look at the Pasik number. Mitzorah, uh, Tezva, Pasik 13, 14, and 15. The Chiyah Taher Hazohav, if the Zov wants to retire, Hazohav is a person who has a flow out of his body, a certain liquid, not blood. Call you Chiyah Taher Hazohav, when a male, uh, when you tired when the zov wants to ma- purify himself, mizovo from his flow, you saw lo shivas yom count seven days, 
letar rasa for his tarum, the chibis begadam, and wash his clothes in the mikvah. Barachas besar b'mayim put his body in the mikvah. Uh, in the living spring, not a mikvah, in a spring. When you, a needle can go into a mikvah, but eat carbonos, you have to be in Maim Chaim. That's not a mikvah, that's a natural spring, a river. A lake that's fed from a natural spring. Maim Chaim is living spring water. Collected water that man puts in a mikvah, that's good for needle and lower tumma. But for carbonos, you need a higher tumma. Maim Chaim, this man is a zob. He can't go into a mikvah, that's going to a Maim Chaim, a spring. Uh, on the eighth day, you take two pigeons. means young ones. or old ones. How do you know? Torim means young, and bnei yona means old because that's what they mean. But a good way to remember it is Torim is one word, and bnei yona is two words. Two is older is more than one. So bnei yona are older, and shtei torim. And uh, p- uh, Torim, and B'nai Yonah, B'nai Yonah, Torim. Torim is a young one, B'nai, uh, B'nai Yonah is the older one. Bo'al Lefnei Hashem, Al Pesav Ohamoy, you come to Hashem, and in front of the Ohamoy, the tent of meeting, but no son of El HaKoyin, give them, these birds, to the coin. But also, also HaKoyin, Echad Chatos, Echad Olam, and make one of them, the coin should make one of them, a Chatos, one of Olam, a Chib Olam, and to be atoned for the Zov, HaKoyin Lefnei Hashem, Mizovo. That's the end, three plus look isn't that interesting? We start out with the word so far to count. And it has exactly 49 words in this Pusik. It needs to do three Pusik. And the seventh word is seven. Seven times seven is 49. And the 33rd word, Lag Bom is the 33rd day. The 33rd word is Moed, Yontem. And Shavuos is in here because it says Yom Shmini on the eighth day. You know that after 49 days, seven weeks are over. What starts the next minute? 50, that's the beginning of the 8th week. Yom HaShemini, that's a Ramez, not Peshat. Ramez for Shavuos. Because Shavuos is the 50th day, which is the day after 49. The day after 7 weeks is the beginning of the 8th week. That's the 8th week, which is the 50th day. Yom HaShemini, Yikach Shtei Torim, represents two Torahs. Torah Shviksav and Torah Shemal Peh. Shnei B'nei Yona. And what else? On Shavuos we bring Shtei Halechem. The two Chalos that are the Chomet, by the way. Only time of the year you bring Chomet is Shtei Halechem and Karben Toda. And you have two Torim, represent two Torim, Toshim Ksav, Toshim Abed, and Shnei B'nei Yonah, Shnei B'nei Yonah, this represents the two Chalas uh, on Shavuot, Shnei Halechem. So this Pasuk has in a remnant to Lagba Omer, because the 33rd day is Moe. It has a remnant to Sphira, because of the 49 words. And the seventh word is seven, that's 49. And it has remnant to Shavuot, because it says Vyom HaShmini, and Shavuot is the 50th day after 49. And that's the beginning of the eighth week, 50. And then it has Shnei Torim, which is two birds. Shnei Yonah and Shnei Alechem on Shmuz. That takes care of that. Now we get to the third, the fourth subject. One, Hei'ir uh, in Ramban, Lag Bomer, And um, now we get to a Nido. Doesn't say anywhere in the Torah that a Nido has to go to the Mikvah. Nowhere. You find that, you call me on my cell phone, you get a prize. Anywhere in the Torah where a needle has to go to the mikvah. A man who touches a needle has Tommy, he goes to the mikvah. A needle never has to go to the mikvah. Never. Well, they all do, right? Show me. Here. He tells Vav, Pastor, you test. The Isha ki si a zova dom, which has a flow of blood. Ye a zova bibisara on the flesh. Shiva's yomam tia benida so. Seven days she'll be in her needle. The choha no geabo, anyone who touches a needle. Yit madar, he's Tommy till the evening. Anyone who sleeps with her while her nida, he's tummy. Anything that comes, whatever she sits on, he sits on it, he's tummy. Anyone who touches her bed, even. Wash his clothes in the mikvah. And wash his body in the mikvah. Okay. So, doesn't say anywhere that the mikvah, a woman has to go to the mikvah. Right? I need them. So how come everybody goes? If you don't go, you hide cars. Hmm? Ever wonder about that? If you learned this year with me, my shiur and makot, gigantic little secrets of the Torah, niflaot ha-Torah. That's my safer. It's going and coming for a fourth printing now. You have to learn slow. And you see, for instance, like the Ramban, there never was such a thing as, let's say, uh, with saras, a regular normal saras. 
uh, that hey, you ought to do some kind of hint, you make up what up with it, what you want. And then you have the Omer, how it's 49. And the Lagba Omer there and there and then and the Shuls. Now we get to the next Sunday. And need them. Where in the Torah does it tell me you need that to make it? Nowhere. You know why? You know why? Because why should you go to a mikvah if you're Nida? Why? Why? Tell me one reason. Every 12 year old girl has to go to mikvah. The Torah does not obligate you to go to the mikvah because you're Nida. It obligates you to go to the mikvah so your husband can sleep with you. Otherwise, Kores. Not every girl who's a, uh, who has a, uh, uh, who get, has need of, is married. Some people 50 years old never went to mikvah. They're never married. Or a 12-year-old girl. In fact, if a young girl goes to the mikvah all the time, it's a zona. She's a zona. That means she doesn't want the guy to be chayv kares. So it's a lesser uh, But why would the unmarried woman go to mikvah? That's a, a bad, bad sign. You only go to mikvah because of us and the husband to sleep with you. That's why. Not because you're a nida. Because you're married. That's why. And talking about that, why is... Nushim. You wrote by Nushim. Why is Nido not in Nushim? Why is Masech the Nido not in Nushim? Because what does Nido have to do with marriage? He'd be married. He'd never be married. You know what Nido is in Taras. We're coming up to it soon. August, we're making the scene on shots. The last Masech was Nido. You know, Nido has to do with Taras. You want to stay pure as a young girl? For someone to marry you, high class people, you have to be tall hard, keep yourself tall hard, as when you're in young Basula, a needle. That's why it's in Kutchum, not in Nashim. Just because you need it doesn't mean you're married. What does that one have to do with the other? Since we're talking about that, why is Chulin in uh, Nidos and Taras? Well, I'm sorry, in Taras. Needles and Taras, because you want to keep yourself tar while you're a young girl before you're married, that's why needles and Taras. And not, not in Nashim, because in, 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 in need has not to do with marriage. You can be in Nido all your life and never be married. Now, the second thing is, why is Chulim in Kachim? Why isn't Chulim eating regular food in Moed, Yom Tovim, when you eat food? You know why? If you eat your Chulim Bitaro, not Carbonus food, no, you know, you can watch out for Juma and Meiser, and, and, and you watch for, uh, for a bus of a cholov and all kind of trefers. If you eat your chul and betara, you're a holy man. That's why chul is in kachim. Eat, Hashem says, I took you out of Mitzrayim only because you keep away from Shurotzim. It says that. And then there's means. I took you out only because of Shurotzim. That would have been enough already. Just keep away from Shurotzim. Shurotzim is animals that jump and ramosim animals that crawl. Keep away from these creepy things. About to shock you. Don't become disgusting. By eating these disgusting little things. Hashem made them out disgusting. To you, to human nature, they look... You, you don't like to eat. You shouldn't put them in your mouth. So the, um, the Arachim, who was from Morocco, they, there was a disease going on, and he forbade the people, the Taimani Eden, to eat those kosher shrutzim called Chagavim. Uh... Red, um, locusts. And they listened to him. And the disease went away for 12 years. Because they didn't eat what their, their Masoda was to, to eat the Chagavim. That's the only flying insect that they can eat. We can't. They have a Masoda. So he says, he said to Arachayim over there, last week's Pashim, he says um, that to eat these things, even though the culture is Meshukas, he told them, us to eat and they, the disease stopped. And there's a Gemara of Kahana was eating one of these shratzim, the Chagavim, and someone said, he was sitting by a table by another Kahana, Tana and Amora, take it away from you, remove your hand from that. People think you're eating shratzim, they don't know you're eating Chagavim, which is kosher la locus. Don't eat it, disgusting. So you see, even though it's mutter, it's recommended not to do it. And the third thing is, why is Pirko Avos in the Zik? Shouldn't be in in Brochus, in Zroyim, we're all, you know, Dabning, Tfilas, Amuna, and Hashem. And, and then the last paragraph of um, Brochus is, is the, the second biggest piece of a Gadotan all shot, ten black. The ninth paragraph of, of, of Brochus. Why isn't it there? You know why? Mara says, you know why? Although it's all this good advice, 
we're learning Pirk Ovis now, right? Oh, you know, because it's, because it's in the Zikim. Harotel Yos Chasido, you want to be a pious man, always learn the Sechtas Ovis. You won't get into trouble, you won't have to go to court, you won't have to swear and lie and cheat and, and borrow and steal and this and get involved with business and, and with. All things that the Baba Kamba and Siyan Baba Bas is about, Makos, all in the Zikin, also about all kinds of entanglements and swearing in business. And, and, and if you are Rosi, those Chasido, you want to be a very pious man. Misasik, Masech Dezovus. Learn Masech Dezovus, learn to be a mensch. That's why it's in. That's why it's in the Zikin. Don't get involved with damages, torts and damages and swearing and false and, and documents and witnesses and all that stuff. Okay, Rabbi Isai, we're finished for this week's year. Have a wonderful Shabbos, Sazri and And we hope that next week, it's also a double sedrum. Achimos Kadoshim will be back. Zayi Gazun Shabbos, and have a good Shabbos this weekend.